Hey there guys, this is Flamzeron, aka YouTube's Tosuke, and we finally got that Shinmu HD remaster we all wanted, and guess what? I finished it, and guess what? I'm gonna review it now. I wasn't planning to, but I'm gonna. I'll go more into what exactly that means as we continue. Not really too important to the uh, quality of the uh, remaster, but I think it's kind of interesting coming from someone who... Uh, has, had played the original, especially someone who uh, got into it kind of late. I guess that's probably um, why it happened this way, but I'm kind of being too cryptic. But uh, basically, yeah, Shinmu 1 and 2 HD, or just Shinmu 1 and 2, uh, came out. I got the PS4 version. I played it. I beat it, surprisingly, and I, uh, I'm going to do a review on it. I was going to originally just do a My Thoughts on it, um, and as I'm recording this, I'm, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do the footage for it. I have an idea of how I'm going to do on, do it. It's, it, it's, it kind of depends on how long the, uh, review itself is, but I have notes because I chat posted about it in, uh, our, uh, Discord server, which is also where we do the podcast, and I also talked about this on the podcast, so if you want to listen to, uh, I'm recording this after we've done the podcast, obviously, because obviously there's a link to it, but also it's been a little bit since I've uh, played the game. At the moment, I'm playing Soul Calibur VI, and that's kind of the next big thing. But uh, um, so it's been a little bit, but obviously since I've got the notes, I'm not really gonna forget anything, you know. But if you want to hear, um, just if you want to hear it on the podcast, it's gonna be in the link in the description. But uh, yeah. So, I guess we'll just jump right into it. Uh, like I said, I got the PS4 version. And one of the first things I noticed was that, uh, unlike um, Symphonia Chronicles, for example, and I'm, you're, you're probably going to hear me make a lot of comparisons to that, since that's like the main um, HD remaster collection that I have experience with. But uh, I, got the, I got the physical disc version, also because I wanted that poster, which I put in my room. Uh, maybe I'll have a link to my Instagram so where you can see me, you can see the picture of the poster on my wall. But, uh, yeah, so I got the physical version, but even with that in mind, uh, I noticed when I put the game disc in, it didn't take take me to like a, just like a Shinmu 1 and 2 HD thing, and I clicked on it, and, uh, it would take me to, like, a little main menu where I could pick the games. It literally just, like, prompted a download for both games. Um, I still had to have the disc in to play them, but I found it kind of weird that I had to... Uh, it was literally just, like, a, not even, like, an... I guess kind of, like, a weird install, you know, boot disc or whatever, but it, it was kind of weird how, like, it didn't even give me, like, a menu. Like, it literally would just, like, prompt the uh, the downloads to, uh, to both games, and... Instead of taking me to like a menu, like in Symphonia Chronicles, where you know, like you put the game in, like you have a choice between Symphonia or uh, Dawn of the New World, and you could pick from there. And I thought that was kind of weird, but it wasn't too, uh, too weird. Um, I would have preferred it like it was in Symphonia. I, I guess it kind of saves time a little bit. Um, I don't know, and I guess it was maybe a little easier. Um, I think you can get the the game separately digitally on like PSN and like Xbox Live and Steam. I don't remember. I don't remember if you have to get them both together or you if you can get them separately. I don't know why you would want to get one or the other because it's not like there's a PC version of one like a long time ago and then another one came up. Like th this is the first time uh, they've been available on PC um, natively without Dreamcast emulation or Xbox emulation if you if you're that hardcore. Um, and by hardcore I mean knowing how to have an Xbox emulator on your computer. I guess that's a little easier to pull off, but I'm getting kind of sidetracked. Um, there's just something that was kind of weird and not really anything too major, though overall the remaster was actually pretty good. I know this is going to be kind of blasphemous considering what you've probably heard me talk about on the podcast and in other videos here, maybe even in my uh, previous Shinmu 1 and 2 reviews, which I will have a link to those as well, because I'm not going to go too far into, like, the story details, so if you want to know what I actually think about the games themselves, and not, like, just the quality of the, re the remasters, there'll be a link in the description to, uh, both my Shinmu 1 and my Shinmu, bleh, Shinmu 2, uh, review. A lot, a lot of links in this, uh, um, video. 
But uh, I actually, and I know this is going to be kind of blasphemous since I kind of praise this game's tank controls, but I actually use the analog stick because I thought it worked better um, than the D-pad. I think it was mainly because of the PS4 control and how it was shaped. I imagine if you were to play um, the Xbox One version, it would actually probably be better to use the D-pad. Or if you were playing uh, the PC version and you were using a Logitech controller, uh, D-pad again. Or if you were using a PS3 controller, analog stick, or PS4 controller, analog stick. Or if you were using the Switch, probably the D-pad. Or rather the Switch controller, because obviously the game's not on Switch. But, uh, they, they didn't port over the, uh, the Xbox controls from Shinbu, Shinbu 2, um, into Shinbu 1, which I thought that was actually kind of nice. And they, they didn't even put that in for Shinbu 2 as well, like, uh, um, it, it's still, like, there's no, like, because in, for those of you who don't know, I don't remember if I talked about this, um, in my video review of Shinbu 2, but in Shinbu 2, the Xbox version, which is the one I played, um, which is also the one they use as, like, the base for this port. I think they did that for the sake of the ease of porting it over. Um, and that's my guess, just because the architecture is probably a little bit more similar. Um, but And I think they also probably wanted, like, a little bit of... You know, they, they had their reasons, basically. But uh, on the uh, Xbox version of Shinmu 2, there was a modern control... Uh, I think it was called modern control or like an alternative control setting you could do in the options where the analog stick like it, it was you know typical modern games where like if you tap it slightly you you walk but if you kind of like push on it you run you know they, they did that um, this time they took that out you still have to do the run button and whatnot but uh, it was pretty good graphically I thought it looked good I like the HUD as well they they use the Shinmu 2 style HUD as the base for both games, and they also uh, rearranged the, a few things, and also the um, what do you call it? The uh, user interface and the pause menu and whatnot is uh, changed. I mean, as far as I know, there's no way to uh, fix it. Though one of the things you can do, which I actually think is really good for a remaster to do, is you can actually uh, uh, turn off the upscaling if you want to play the game in the standard revolu uh, resolution, resolution, um, and you can also uh, have it be 4x3 instead of 16x9. You can actually like take it out of widescreen. So if you want to have like a pseudo-authentic Shinbu experience, you can do it that way. I played it with the widescreen and the uh, upscaling turned on just because I felt like I wanted it to be, you know, really uh, clean looking. And also, I, I wanted it to kind of feel like a remaster because I feel like if I wanted to just play the original Shinmu, I, I could do that. Uh, obviously with Shinmu 1, it's all on one disc. I, th I assume for Shinmu 2 it was the same way. Obviously for the Xbox version it was just one disc. Oh, that's another thing I should note. Like, there's no, uh, there's no, like, Shinmu movie. That was a separate disc on the Xbox version, so I guess they couldn't really include that. But that, that's just kind of something interesting to note. And also, um, they have the H... Like, you, you can do a lot of cool stuff with, like, the graphics. It's sort of like a pseudo PC game in a way. Like, you can, like, turn off the bloom. I don't think you can do, like... A lot of stuff that you could do in like our standard PC game, but you can do some stuff, and it's pretty cool. And the, this game also has dual audio for the first time. I played it, I played like a small section of it with the Japanese audio, and by a small section, I mean like just like a few seconds, just so I could hear like how it sounded. Um, I didn't do it for Shinmu 2, I just did it for Shinmu 1, but I played uh, both games in English just because I wanted to. Um, the subtitles look good. Uh, there's something I kind of noticed with Shinmu 2, but I'll get to that as we. Uh, go on. Um, one thing I to kind of get to the sort of that uh, thing I was hinting at. Um, I started playing uh, Shinmu One HD on uh, on the twenty first of uh, August, and within like a few days, or like maybe even a, a day, like a couple of days, I was already at the Master Chin part. Um, I I found that really surprising that I was going through the game so fast. Um, especially considering I like Shinmu 2 better, so I feel like I... And since I had played that one, like, uh, a little more recently. Recent enough for Zestiria, at least. Um, I felt like that would be a little more uh, current in my mind, but Shinmu 1, you know, I, I went pretty far with it, and I was like, you know what? 
I'm going to go ahead and just try to, you know, finish both games because I feel like, you know, because I, I kind of low-key wanted to do that to prepare for Shinmu 3, especially knowing that, like, because now Shinmu 1 and 2 are on the same console um, in North America, at least. I know Europe had them both on Dreamcast, so you could do this if you want to, but you could actually uh, carry over your save data from Shinmu 1 into Shinmu 2 to get to carry over like your stuff it doesn't matter too much in terms of money because you know obviously you lose it but um i was honestly really surprised at how quickly i was playing the game um it, it seemed it's honestly like it seemed a lot shorter than i remember i almost kind of felt because i remembered certain where like the uh, disc breaks were where like you know you're on disc one like this thing would happen that would be like please insert disc two i kind of remembered roughly where they all were I, I remember Shinmu. I remember disc one and the the uh, transition between disc one and two clearer than I do uh, two and three. And I don't know if like I'm I don't I don't think they cut anything out, but I, I just found it really interesting how like I I um I was going through the game a lot quicker. Um, I don't know. I guess I'm just that good at video games. Um, but uh, I I got to the forklift part. Uh, pretty quickly. I think part of it was that, like, I was trying to kind of... I sort of knew kind of who to talk to. I think that's part of it. And also, I sort of knew the layout, or became more familiar with the layout of uh, Yamanose um, a lot quicker. You know, thinking about it, it's actually a pretty small um, game. It's, it's a very ambitious game, but the general scale of it, I think, is kind of small. I think Shinmu 2 probably is a bit more of a larger game in terms of the lo location. But, uh, you know, yeah, that was just something I found kind of interesting. That's kind of the reason why, or that that is the reason why this is a full-on review and not just, uh, you know, a, my thoughts on like I did for Symphonia Chronicles. Because with Symphonia Chronicles, I knew I wasn't going to play through the entire game anytime soon. That's probably going to be the case with uh, Vesperia Definitive Edition as well, uh, where it's just going to be like, you know, I'll play it for a little bit and then put it on the back burner while I either go back to my main game, which at that time will probably be uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 um, or whatever, and uh, I'll come back to it later when I'm ready to sort of, you know, play through it and kind of have a more... Because uh, I know with Symphonia Chronicles, I kind of want that to be, like, my main way of playing Symphonia. So I, I have a little bit of a plan where I'm going to have, like, a... I'm going to try and keep the Kratos and the Zealous files really close together. Not... Uh, which Because I, I didn't do that um, back when I first played the game on the GameCube. I, I, I started the Zealous file, like, a lot later. No, thankfully I had a backup uh, in, like, multiple saves, so I could, you know, continue. But, yeah, I definitely really breezed through. I don't want to say breezed through because it definitely took a while, and there were a couple of times where I had to look up an FAQ. Like, I didn't remember where uh, the that one bar was I where you had to, like, go, and that's where you get, like, the information about the sailors and whatnot. I didn't um, remember where that was, but uh, I eventually uh, found it, and, you know, it wasn't too bad. Um... And uh, the uh, quick time events worked pretty well. I didn't notice any, like, delays or anything. That was actually one of the first things I did. I wanted to see kind of how they looked, so I went to the uh, arcade or the game center, um, since this is, this is Japan land. And I did the uh, the uh, punching uh, minigame. That's actually probably my favorite. Um, and, of course, I played a little bit of Space Harrier and all that. But, yeah, to kind of get back on track, um, overall it was a pretty good remaster so far um i did notice a couple graphical glitches i think they patched them out by the time i got further along into the game but it was mainly uh it was mainly like uh cutscene glitches like there was one where uh it was when a uh, rio found the other mirror i think it's the dragon mirror and he shows it to fukusan um and i think the cutscene was supposed to be, um, and I, I didn't remember the cutscene, so I didn't think anything of it at the time, but so, but I think it was supposed to be, like, one where it's, like, maybe it show, it's showing Ryo and Fuku-san, um, or Fuku, or whatever you want to call him, um, looking at the mirror in, like, his room or something, but what they were showing me was just, like, a little corner of, uh, the Hazuki Dojo with the snow and whatnot, and, like, I was hearing a voiceover, and I, again, I didn't remember what the, uh, um, cutscene specifically was, so I'm just thinking, like, oh, well, maybe this is just how it was. Maybe they were trying to be funny or, or like, be artistic or something. But, uh, I 
later realized, like, well, that probably wasn't... Because, like, the dialogue, the way the dialogue sounded, it sounded vague enough to where you probably didn't need to actually see it. But it also sounded like it, it was meant to actually be seen up close. It, it, it was an interior shot, um, I believe, if I'm using my script writing terms correctly, which I'm probably not. But uh, um, there was another one where it was just, you know, a black screen... And it was uh, when uh, Ryo goes back to old warehouse number eight to talk to Master Chen and uh, Gui Zhang. And Chai shows up, and it, it, there's a quick time event that goes with it. So thankfully, I actually had the uh, mindset to, you know, know like, oh, well, this this probably wasn't how it was in the original. So, like, I fucking, you know, turned the game off and turned it back on. And I heard that, like, uninstalling the game and reinstalling it actually worked, would fix it, would fix it. And that actually did work, I think. Uh, which was good because if I missed that quick time event, I probably would have, you know, gotten the game over. But uh, um, one glitch also during the forklift thing. It's not the fork uh, glyph, bleh, the forklift day glitch, though it is still there. Um, I did get into a uh, another glitch where like I got stuck on the crates and I couldn't move, and I it was pissing me off. Uh, because with the the forklift thing, I was actually doing a lot better than I was when I first played the game. I think part of it was due to like where I just come from in my personal life. So like, and having a sort of a situation kind of like that was kind of stressful. Um, and I was I was younger, so I mean not by much, but uh, um, I uh, and this time around, I actually met the quota several times. I only didn't meet the quota like once. But, like, I did really good, and I, and I started using, uh, I, I think it's because I understood the layout more, and I figured out what the good routes were, um, though I did get caught with the glitch, I believe, and so I had to look up, you know, you know, what, how properly to handle that, and thankfully I, um, I was able to, uh, fix it, but, uh, the other glitch I, uh, I ran into with the, I got stuck on the, uh, a group of, uh, crates, and I couldn't move, so I literally just had to sit there and wait for the day to be over. And because I didn't trigger the cutscene because I didn't move, I um, I had to restart that day. So I, I guess that's that's not really. I mean, that pr you probably could just sit there and like just redo days. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. You'd probably have to do it on the right days to pull it off. I, like, I don't, if you were to do it on the first day, I, I think it would probably be all like, well, that that's, that was just your day. You just did a shitty job, apparently. But, um, yeah, the forklift thing was actually a lot easier. And even the, the uh, race, I think the highest I got was like second place, second or third place, which for me is uh, was kind of a big deal, I think. Because I, one, for one thing, I'm not really good at racing games. And two, like... You know, I always kind of struggled with that part. So, like, you know, I say struggle, but, like, you know, I, I never got first place. Not that I would ever really try, but I, I don't know if I just, like, it's like, oh, well, I'm pl since I've already played it once before, you know, there's not really, I could have more fun, I, I guess. Like, not that the game wasn't already fun, but I, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I was able to relax. I don't know what it was, but, like, I think part of it was due to my uh, stress levels while playing this section. Because the first time I played it, I was getting fucking frustrated with people running into me. Like, I almost acted like I was actually Rio doing the job. I got into it. And, like, whereas here, I was kind of able to go into, like, sort of autopilot mode. Um, I even have the... You know, the song that plays when you're doing your job. It's a very much a working song, if you ask me. Um, the motorcycle part, that was still pretty tough. It didn't took me nearly as many tries to do it. Um, I had to break a lot, but I was able to, you know, get through it and do it. And Shinmu one was finished, um, which I finished on the 29th of August. So uh, it only took me like seven, like a full week to beat uh, Shinmu one, which I remember it took me longer. I'm pretty sure it took me a little longer. I think it took me like maybe a month to finish Shinmu one at the very first time. Then I started into Shinmu two. Um, which, uh, you know, that uh, I learned I, after playing, replaying both games, I actually do realize that, yeah, yeah, 2 is currently my favorite uh, just because of the stuff. It, it feels like a, a good sequel, and I like the uh, 
the world and you know I like the characters and all of that. Um, the first thing I have in my little notes with Shinmu 2 is uh, the box moving mini game because I remember that was like a good way to get money. Um, of course, I learned pretty quickly on that you know gambling is the way to get money, but uh, it seemed a little slower pace this time around. I don't. I think part of it might have been because I was was uh, I'm not sure what exactly it was. I do think part of it has to do with the fact that now a QTE shows up when the guy is making a grunt indicating you to go forward. Um, I th and I think that kind of slowed things down because I, I, I wouldn't just hit forward just like by default. I would I, I think I was subconsciously waiting for the prompt. Um, it's still it still can be pretty annoying. Like I one thing that happened was that I dropped the box once and then uh, I think his name is a Doolin. He's all like left 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 and it's like holy shit. It was on the fifth box though. So, I mean, it makes sense. And I kind of was getting to a point where it's like, yeah, I know what to do. I've done this before. Um, but uh, one thing that happened was that I did an arm wrestling thing that gave me an extra 40 bucks. And this thing, whew, this thing, I felt like I was, I felt like my entire ability as a human being was being challenged. Like, I felt like my endurance, my dexterity, my speed, my strength was being tested. Like, I was hitting it as hard as I could. It was one of those things where it's one of those things where like you're hitting it and you're kind of at like a standstill and you can go a little harder and a little faster and that actually pushes it. But it's one of those things where it's like, you know, if you keep doing that, you're going to tire yourself out. So it's one of those things where it's like, you know, you can win it if you just hit really hard, but you're also trying to make sure you actually win by conserving your energy. Um, the way that they make it kind of win, um, or the way that you, you kind of lead more in your favor is you can do a quick time event, and that's what I did. Um, and when I finally did, when I was actually like about to, when I I let out a giant key eye, a key eye, key eye, key eye, you know, an epic yell of victory or an epic yell of like triumphant. Like I went super sane basically, and I felt fucking tired afterwards. So uh, I decided, you know, what? I'm just gonna stick with the fucking gambling once I get to. Uh, Kowloon, because I know, like, the monkey guy is, like, a good way to get money. Though I did find a better way. Um, I found the roll, one of the roll it on top guys, and I did that. Um, I did that, and I, I was able to, I think, get to, like, maybe a thousand, maybe three thousand dollars by the end of it. Um, and I also did the big or small um, thing, and that was a good way to make a lot of money. I kind of like roll it on top better because it's a lot simpler. And of course, you know, obviously with, you know, the way the gambling works in terms of like making sure you get your money is uh, to friggin, you know, save after ev save after every victory and every t and if you lose, you quit and reload. I did that. But uh, it was pretty, it was pretty, um, it was pretty cool, you know, getting all that money that early because I remember, you know, Wanting to like you know I when I pl was playing Shinmu two for the first time I just wanted to get through the story like I don't want to I don't care about the fucking money I just want to play through the story, and I actually forgot that you have to give Ren five hundred bucks I think you get it back if I'm, or no I made it back I think I made it back because I found a betting spot where you bet like basically five hundred bucks, and I did that over and over and I I won, I got my money's back. Uh, though, uh, big or small was definitely the way to like get, cause yeah, I think that one was actually the 500 because I would get like a thousand and there were a couple where like it would double, but there were a few times where like the, like I, it was hard for me to tell whether or not I actually gained anything. So, but, uh, continuing with my apparent success of getting through the Shinmu games, cause again, this game, even though I'm pretty sure it's a little bit longer than Shinmu one, um, I got through it really fucking quick. Um, but uh, I, I started it the same night that I finished Shinmu 1, so the 29th of August. Um, I also didn't know that in Shinmu 1, just a quick side tangent, that the uh, little building that you can go to, like right in front where the uh, first, um, or like that telephone booth is across from and like where the first soda cans are, I didn't know that was like a candy shop. I didn't know you could actually go in there. I've been, I had been going to the fucking tomato uh, convenience store place. Which, I mean, can you blame me with that? That do 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 do, you know, song. But, uh, yeah, like, continuing onward with my apparent success of going through this friggin' game, 
and succeeding and everything. I was able to beat the book pile mini game, which I've never done before. The way I kind of did it was uh, rely on the run button and kind of like tapped it slightly because I. It was one of the things where I was able to. I picked up on the fact like, well, if I'm holding if I'm holding up to run or to walk, the game is going to register m- me moving as as me pressing up on the uh, control stick. So I shouldn't do that because then that's going to count me as a fail when the quick time event comes up. So I was able to do it. It took me a few tries. Like the first time I, I got close is mainly uh, mainly because I was running into stuff and dropping shit, but I was able to do it. And then right after I finally beat it, shooting comes up and is all like, "Hey, um, let's do the uh, let's do the a leaf thing, where you know you try to like focus on a leaf and catch it with your two fingers as it falls." It took me a few tries. It didn't actually take me that many tries at all. But this is like, for those who don't know, this thing is infamously like one of the most hardest parts of Shinmu 2. It's like the it's the motorcycle uh, scene. Or it's the motorcycle section of Shinmu 2, quote unquote, and it happens a fair amount earlier in the game. Because the motorcycle thing that happens near the end of uh, Shinmu 1, whereas this leaf catching thing, it happens a little bit, not like really early in the story, but you know, not definitely not like in like the uh, near the end or near the beginning, kind of in the middle, I guess. It didn't take me too many tries at all, like just a few tries. And then when I got had to do the three in a row, I did it on my first try, which I think says a lot, because that's one of the parts. That's one of the parts that makes it really hard. Um, you have to kind of use like the looking. I think it's like the right stick, and you have to like do the zoom in thing, and like you have to focus on a leaf, and uh, it'll make a chime. And when it makes the chime, you're supposed to press the button to grab it. It helped because like you could use, um, in my case, the X button, but also one of the shoulder buttons. I don't remember which one it was, but I did that, and I did the shoulder buttons, and that made it easier for me to kind of um, oh, no. do it. I had to kind of like sort of like that claw um, sort of thing. It made it a lot easier for me to actually beat it. I think that was part of the reason why um, it was maybe more difficult. I don't remember how I did it in the Xbox version. I might have done the same thing thinking about it, but it's hard to say. Um, but yeah, without um, before too long, I was already in Kowloon. I already did the tape recorder thing, and of course I made sure to do the thing where Joy calls uh, Gui Jong. I Because I, I, I remember that like, I need to do that. Um, at that point, I had to kind of have an FAQ handy because you know, it was a lot of like you know stuff that a little s- smaller details that I didn't really remember, so I had to do that. And I also got like four thousand dollars doing like tournaments. So getting into the tournaments where you have to actually pay to get in, that wasn't really an, an issue. I think the most expensive one was like maybe fifteen hundred, maybe even two thousand. Of course, I had like four thousand, so like it wasn't really an issue. Um, glitches were kind of minor. There was one where um, during one of the tournaments, the announcer was clipping in the center, or the MC rather, was clipping in the center of the arena. It didn't really mess anything up, but it was just kind of something I noticed. And also, there were a couple of shots where they showed the back of Rio's head, and his hair was looking kind of like uh, low poly. Um, And probably the biggest sort of thing... and. I'm wondering if this has to maybe do with the way the Xbox version was coded, but there were a couple of times where my uh, um, button presses didn't register for the quick time events. It was during the uh, one where you're in the old building trying to find Yondazu, and uh, and uh, it was it's usually during. I'll give the game this. I'll give the I'll give it this much credit. It's during a part. It, w- it usually would happen where like it would give me a quick time event to kind of regain my balance because I'm you're basically walking a across like like a a long thing of wood and you're trying to maintain your balance and if you fail it you fall off and die and he's in Rio the, it flashes to like Rio looking up and you're like it would be messy if I fell from there I'm like shut the fuck up Rio <laughs> I, uh, it got to a point where like I would actually stop the game and like reload it because like, I got so tired and I, I, uh, I uh, one of hearing it and also I didn't want to go all the way back up to the top like I, so I would basically save in between doing every single section of that. But, um, well, where they would challenge you a little more was you would, they would do one quick time event and then they would trigger another one right away. And that second one, I think, had a little bit less time 
to uh, to uh, respond to. And I think because of, like, I'm trying to think, like, I think in terms of the beeps, I think I it takes me, like, three or four beeps for me to respond if we're talking about how fast, you know, fast my time is. Um, do, 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 do. Like yeah, you know, I think my fastest one might be four beeps. I mean, they're they're fast beeps. To, like I'm, I don't mean like oh you're slow. Like well, I mean, yes and no. But um, in terms of uh, I think I think that's part of the reason why they wouldn't register because I'd be because of my response time I'd be doing it just a hair late. It got to a point to where the only way I could win would be to just memorize the the quick time event to win. Um. One thing that was also kind of funny, since I was talking about Soul Calibur 6, I actually pulled the Soul Calibur to where, like, I actually fell out of the ring after winning. Because I know that's something you can do in Soul Calibur, where, like, after you, you, you do a ring out, you run across, and you can jump after your enemy for funsies. Um, but another thing I also learned about, you know, this game, like, when they do the com the uh, button, the combo key, uh, quick time events where you have to do a little combo, I noticed, like, um, doing them really slow. Um, I haven't tested to see like if I just don't do anything, if like if the game will be all like, hey, you know, you took too long, so we we you, you failed. Um, but uh, I I noticed doing them slow uh, really helped. Um, also noticed another glitch when I was going to the I think it was the yellow man building I think it's called the, the big building where you basically start from the bottom and go all the way up to the top before you uh, fight uh, before you leave chi for China there's on the ninth floor there's a part where Rio just like popped up from the ground as if like he was being like loaded into place or something um, this part I did a lot better at I remember the first time I played it, it was a fucking drag I think part of the reason why is because I had a FAQ with me like basically handy because I was I was anticipating that like this was going to be a really big pain this time around, I didn't really use an FAQ that much. I only used it for, like, stuff where it's, like, well, if I have to, like, you know, look around for a lot of stuff or, like, if I was on a time limit. Um, I did a lot better during the sneaking around parts. I, did, I didn't mess up on the last one where I had to fight everyone, but other than that, I did pretty well. It wasn't nearly as exhausting this time around because I remember, like I said, like, it was so tiring that when I finally got to China after I beat it, Zist I decided, you know what, I'm just going to wait for Tales of Zestiri to come out. Um... Which I'm pretty sure it came out like a week later, so I took a break to play through Tales of Zestiria, and thankfully that was uh, that really uh, helped uh, get me back into the groove a little bit. Um, I got it. It's your turn. The fight with Don Yu, I remember that took me a million tries when I first fought him, and the main reason why was because everyone's like, "Watch out! Whoa! Hey, look out! Hey, watch it!" Like your friends are like yelling at you and I'm just like shut the fuck up you're breaking my concentration and I had to mute the TV in order to win it was that much of a pain uh, thankfully this time around I was able to uh, win without muting the TV and it, it didn't even take me that many tries so I was able to do it pretty well um, I also made sure to take a picture of Londi when he shows up in the in the helicopter because you can do that. I took a bunch of screenshots using the the uh, PlayStation share button, so took a lot of those as well. But I also took pictures with um, the camera. Oh, I also I I don't remember if I mentioned this, but when I played the Xbox version of Shinbu 2, I was playing it on my Xbox 360 because um, I don't have an original Xbox. And one thing I noticed that like one of the buttons would like make the game freeze a little bit for like a few seconds. <laughs> And I figured out, I think I figured out what was going on, because I noticed that, like, on this uh, PS4 version, on the HD version, and I would press, I think the same button were, like, basically the same, like, the, uh, I think it was, like, it's either the left or the right shoulder button. I think probably the right, maybe. Maybe even the left. I don't remember. But it was the same general button, and it would change the uh, color. Like, it would change the filter for, like, the picture mode. Like, you, do, you could do black and white or, like, sharp images, or rather sharp colors. You could put on like a sep sepia tone or, a, or like a yellow t uh, tinted thing, and I think that's sort of what was going on. I think the game was being all like, "Hey, you can have this uh, these cool filters." I'm like, "Okay, cool, thank you." Um, I showed, I did those for a little bit, 
didn't really do too much. I didn't really do too much experimenting with the uh, options. I didn't play the game and I didn't switch over the voices to Japanese or anything. Just to kind of hear the differences or anything. Like I just kept it the way it was. Um, but then we go into China, which they changed the fucking quick time event sound, and thankfully I was able to hear it a lot easier. Um, the trek to Bailu Village with a Shinwa seemed a lot more dragged out than I remember. I don't know if it was just late or if I was uh, dealing with, I don't know, fatigue or... If I just didn't remember if I was exhausting too many dialogue options, because I remember I actually heard some stuff that I hadn't heard uh, Rio and Shinwa talk about, though. I guess so. Um, I did notice a couple of things that happened here. Um, for one thing, I noticed a plot error, or some sort of writing error, error where one of your dialogue um, options with a Shinwa is about, like, friends, and uh, Rio will eventually talk about Nozomi. But then there's a part later in a cave where she asks about friends again. And uh, if you mention Nozomi, which I think you have to mention everyone, but uh, if you mention Nozomi, she acts like she doesn't know who you're talking about, which I don't know if that was just some sort of like uh, error of... Uh, of judgment or something, but like that, that's something that probably should have, um, uh, had some fixing. I know there's not really anything they can do about it now. They're not going to change the content. I did see that article about how they were thinking about remaking the entire or both games and the footage of the remakes, uh, of what they had done showed up. Hopefully, we'll get to see more. I'd love to see like more than just the, uh, um, the settings. I'd love to see like the character models as well. We get to kind of see the old man. And uh, I think it's Manmo Park and Shinmo Two, uh, Sh Shinmo Shinmu Two. But uh, other than that, no other characters. Um, another thing I noticed was that uh, there were some inconsistencies with the voiceover and the subtitles. I'm wondering. I don't remember this in the original. I'm wondering if this is maybe a a uh, um, consideration for the uh, subs. Again, I don't remember if they changed it. And as far as I know, they could have. Uh, I could just be misremembering, but since they have dual audio, I could see them maybe trying to, like, you know, make the subs subtitles a little more um, accurate to the Japanese version. Though I imagine they didn't really have to do too much, because since it's a game, they don't have to really... I, I think in place of lip flaps, there's, like, time flaps, if that makes any sense, where, like, you have to match, like, the, uh, the same time so that, like, it's the same file size, so you don't have to, like, recode a lot. So... Um, it's one of those things where it's kind of like lip flaps in terms of how it restricts you, but at the same time, like, um, you have, you have more wiggle room to kind of play a little bit and you have, you have the opportunity to make a more accurate script. Um, I think, but I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just something I misremembered. Um, the Bailu, the China section of Shinmu 2 definitely kind of feels like it's its own game. So it'll be interesting to see where Shinmu 3 starts us off. I imagine it'll start us off right at the end of fucking uh, Shinmu uh, 2. That'd be funny if it actually starts us off like the night before. Where Ryo looks at the diagrams and is like, Holy shit, your dad made mirrors. Let's go find your daddy. You know, that stuff. Um, but, um, again, the game didn't really take too long. Like, on the 19th of September, I actually finished uh, Shinmu 2. And I actually did take, the, take a note to, like, you know, write down the times of when I actually uh, started and finished the games. Like, my total playtime was apparently 29 days, so f almost a full month to beat two games. So, for me, that's pretty impressive. I'm, I'm proud of myself and pleased. And I'm glad I actually took the time to play through the entire game. I'm actually almost tempted to play three of them again. And this definitely kind of cemented Shinmu as being one of my favorite video game series because I feel like I could just go back and play, replay it as many times. And even though I know the story and what happens, I, I'll still have a good time because it's definitely one of those more about the journey rather than the destination kind of games. And I, I love how they handle martial arts and I love the story and how it handles, you know, mar martial arts. I think that's one of the reasons why I like it because... It, it tackles a part of martial arts storytelling that I 
hadn't had a chance to really see that often. Uh, kind of like with Cobra Kai, how you know the you know modern martial arts, you know karate dojo, Americanized karate dojo, if you will, sort of like that. Obviously, a different kind of thing, but you know, same general idea of like a certain story giving me something that I want, you know, kind of thing that you know another story doesn't give me. Like, because even though I love Dragon Ball, it doesn't really uh, have everything in it. Even though I feel like, it, in terms of martial arts, it has most things. <laughs> but that's a different subject. But, uh, yeah, overall, this was a good remaster, and it was fun to replay both these games again. It was nice to kind of have, like, a little break from all the other games I've been playing. Uh, if you're thinking about getting uh, Shinmu 1 and 2, or one or the other, even though I don't think that's an option, then this is definitely the version to get because it's on almost every console. I played the PS4 version, though obviously it's on the Xbox One and the PC. The only thing it's not on is Switch, though I could maybe see them bringing it to Switch. And I feel like the Switch is definitely powerful enough to handle uh, these games. So if you want to get into Shinmu, um, definitely this is the way to do it, I think. Especially if, even if you want to play like sort of like a classic version, because the... HUD and the uh, menu aside, you know, you can do like the options thing to like bring the game back to 4x3 and also turn off the uh, high res upscaling or whatever. And you can turn off the bloom and all that. You can basically try to like emulate um, as pure of an experience as you possibly can. Um, of course, if you want to, you could also get the Dreamcast version <laughs> um, of both games. Um, though the Dreamcast version, the only English version of Shinmu 2 that's on the Dreamcast is, is subtitled only with the Japanese voiceover so you know, I think there's a patch to add in the English voices but last time I checked like the audio was kind of like distorted um, I don't really know what that was all about but yeah you have multiple ways to play Shinmu but I'd say get the HD remasters because it's going to be a lot easier You'll and you'll be able to play it on your modern system and uh, assuming you continue to uh if you ever want to come back to it, it'll be a lot, maybe a lot simpler than hooking up your Dreamcast, um, if you have a Dreamcast. Hello. Although if you're if you have multiple consoles hooked up, it won't really be an issue. But basically, if you want to play Shinmu and you haven't played Shinmu, definitely get these HD remasters. I think they're definitely worth the money. Um, I don't think everything's been ironed out yet in terms of glitches and bugs and whatnot. In fact, I think the PC version has more issues than the console version so if you can try to get the console versions um either the xbox one or the ps4 version again i got the ps4 version i'm sure the xbox one version works just as fine but uh yeah definitely uh worth it and it was really fun to go back to this uh game series just in time for shinmu 3 as well since that's going to be coming out next fall but uh that'll be quite the uh nice little treat and this was a nice little uh trip down memory lane, even though that memory for me is kind of recent, because again, I'm a late bloomer with Shinmu. I knew about it, but like I didn't actually uh, get my own copy and play through both games until like uh, much later. And by much later, I mean a few years ago. <laughs> but uh, you can see the dates on the uh, Shinmu 1 and Shinmu 2 reviews that I did back then to see like when exactly um, I played those games and finished them and whatnot. But yeah. Definitely worth your time and your money if you want to get into Shinmu, or if you just want to replay these games, and if especially if you want that cool poster, because that poster is pretty cool. But yeah, I won't keep you guys too much longer. So yeah, thanks for watching, and this is Flames Ron and Sasuke signing out. See you later.